find yourself afraid of anything? All the time. But if I had let my fear stop me, I never would have been an actor, ever. Are you a director to be? Are you a producer to be? You can decide that you want to be something, but who you really are has to come out. Most interesting thing you've learned about love? I knew when I met him it was real and it was adult, and I needed to get to be an adult. Your character is very different than the woman I'm meeting right now. Move on gives no f***s. <laughs> she right. rearranges the world to make it fit her. Where are you now in your acting journey? God, that is such a good question. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. <laughs>《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《
and it'll be fine. It'll be what it'll be. Maddie, Dana Sue, my sisters. Are you different as an actor in the show now than when you first started the show? Because yeah. your character is very different than the woman I'm meeting right now. Mary Vaughn gives no fucks, right. okay? <laughs> right. That's on people's toes. She goes out into the world and she rearranges the world to make it fit her. Allison tiptoes through the world and tries to make sure everyone else is okay. <laughs> like, I could not be further from that woman, which makes her so fun to play because I'm nothing like her. She's unconsciously passive aggressive and she's unaware of how cruel she can be to other people. So I was really hooked into that. And now I'm really interested in seeing the her frayed edges. You know, she's very well put together. She's almost so well put together that you think, what is going on underneath there? And I am very curious to see if we explore that next season, if we get next season. I mean, you cannot be that controlling and not be afraid of something. Do you find yourself afraid very much of anything? All the time. So what do you find yourself afraid of? Oh my gosh, I mean, it's not so much fear as it is um, uncertainty, I think. I think I crave structure and my life is so unstructured just because I'm, a, I'm an actor, that's the way the life is. And I try not to let that stop me. I mean, I, I think my biggest uh, goal in life is to live an adventurous life. That is my only goal in life. So I, yes, I'm fearful, but I still, get out and I still do things. If I had let my fear stop me, I never would have been an actor, ever. Do you get nervous when you audition these days? I am terrible at auditioning, <laughs> terrible in the room. In the room, I'm terrible. I go directly into fight or flight. Casting now has moved to tapes and I've been taping auditions for 10 years now at least um, for lots of different reasons. And so I'm super comfortable taping auditions in my house. And for me and my nervous system, it is so much more creative. I have full control. I can control the lights. I control the costume. I control whether I'm sitting or standing. I use props. I can do whatever I want. And it becomes much more creative rather than being in a room with someone who has <clears throat> an idea of the scene and what they want the scene to be. I don't want to know what you want. This is my time. This is my space. This is my creative. This is my pitch to you of what I want to do with this character. If you don't like it, that's great. Then now we know. But for right now, this is mine. When you get to set, you don't get to choose the, the outfit. You don't get to choose the makeup. You don't get to choose the hair. I mean, you might have a little bit of leeway, a little bit of push-pull, but it's completely co collaborative. And I'm a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to have my creative say, you know? Are you here tomorrow? Sure am. Working nine to five, just like Dolly. Oh, Dolly Parton. Yeah. I like her. Mm, who doesn't? Everybody wants happiness, nobody wants pain. But you can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Wise nice lady. Tell me a little bit about your acting. Why have you stayed with it? And, and, and where are you? I know obviously about Sweet Magnolias, but, but where are you now in your acting journey? God, that is such a good question. And I think it's something, that question is something as an actor that you sometimes have to deal with every single day because you don't get every job that you want and things don't always go your way. In fact, 99% of the time they don't go your way. And that can be really hard to kind of keep moving forward and stay in that soft creative space, even when it feels like nobody gives a crap. So why you stay in sometimes is, I don't know how to do anything else, or it's the only thing that uses all of me. And now I do something that uses my heart, spirit, and my brain, and my emotional life, and my body. It uses everything, and I love that about it. The reason I started is I wanted to change the world. I wanted to rearrange people. Um, I wanted to tell stories that were powerful enough that I had experienced that kind of rearranging. But why I stay now is, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever been a part of something that rearranged anyone just yet. I think I'm still in the beginning parts of my career, even though I've been doing it for 20 years. I'm staying because not only does it use every part of me, but I keep falling in love with it. Well, that makes two of us. You tell them.
I'm not doing your dirty work for you. Even with the jobs that don't feel powerful or that won't change anyone's life, I do think there's some beauty in comfort too. And sometimes projects that you do don't change the world, but they do provide relief and comfort during times that feel really overwhelming and scary. And for sure, I think Sweet Magnolias for a lot of people is a comfort watch. And I think that is also useful. Um, we're not changing the world, but we are presenting a version of the world that feels aspirational. And that in itself, you know, might change people's minds about certain things. What's your favorite film? I'm a little bit of a movie junkie. Do you have a favorite film? I've come to realize that my favorite films have more to do with nostalgia, which maybe isn't quite as artistic as other people. You know, some people love film for what it is, and I kind of love it for what it makes me feel. So all that to say, I think my favorite film would probably be Romancing the Stone. Kathleen Turner. Yes. What's your name? Uh, uh, I'm Joan Wilder. Joan Wilder, welcome to Columbia. She's like a romance writer. Sure. Caught up in this big adventure and she meets Michael Douglas and she ends up living the life that she used to only write about. And I love the whole adventurousness of it. She goes off on a journey. I just love that, like a woman sort of breaking out of the confines that maybe she placed on herself. Breaking out of fear and living a big life. These were Italian. Now they're practical. I love how you how you talk about um, the emotional part of it. It's funny, there was a wonderful, wonderful young filmmaker out of Houston, O.G. Ibono, and she talks about in her films that she focuses not on the plot line, but on the emotional destination. And I love that. Are you a director to be? Are you a producer to be? I would love to direct actors. I tape my friends for auditions and stuff, and I oh, love taping my friends. Love finding these little moments in an audition that that honestly are all about the actor getting more and more in touch with themselves. Finding a character is like excavating. It's not like smearing things on. It's about like going inside. It's almost like a meditation sometimes. What is your great role, Allison? What role would you love to excavate? Can we remake Romancing the Stone? <laughs> oh, nice, but of course we can. Oh, God, who's, who's your co-star? Gosh, I don't know, I'd have to think about that. Most interesting thing you've learned about love? So when I met my husband, my mom had passed away three years earlier and I was still kind of coming out of a depression because of it. I met him and I remember thinking, I need to get into therapy right now because I could feel myself behaving in ways that were old business and had nothing to do with him. And I think it's so trite, but it is so true you cannot love someone else until you can really love yourself. And I'm lucky that I met a man who walked with me through that journey. How long did it take? Three or four years of consistent therapy for me to deconstruct some of my beliefs about love and my fears about love. My instinct was to run. I'd never had a positive relationship um, or fully positive. I'd had a lot of, you know, playing around and I knew when I met him it was real and it was adult and I needed to get get to be an adult. I was 33 at the time. I wasn't young. I think every person needs therapy at some point. You have to process where you came from in order for you to move forward with real wild abandon. I love wild abandon. Why did you know that it was uh, it was real stuff? It was simple and easy and he made me feel safe. He made me feel seen and heard and cared for. And I'd never ever in my entire life felt seen and heard. I definitely felt like when I met him, he was seeing through all of the tricks and um, charm that I can put on. And he really saw me and that scared me. And if something were to happen to him, I don't know, that might be it for me. Like meaning, I don't, I don't know that I'll ever find a love like that again. Alice, before I let you go, I'm going to do rapid fire. You mind if I do rapid fire with you? Right. What movie have you watched the most? Clue. I hated her so much. It, it, the, it flame, flames, flames on the side of my face 
But the newest one is uh, Ted Lasso. What's a billiard game y'all do that sounds like a brand of cookies? Snooker? That's it. That's the one. Yeah, boy, I'd love to curl up on a couch under a weighted blanket, watch You've Got Mail, and devour a box of Snookers. <laughs> Your favorite book of all time? Oh, God, probably The Alchemist, but also Wild, because I so identified with the character. I also lost my mother fairly young and went on a journey to Asia. If I gave you one do-over in this life, how would you use it? I would start acting much earlier. I wish I had... Uh, started much earlier and trusted myself. If you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would you love to have dinner with? You know who would be so interesting? Michelle Obama. I feel like we could be good friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Michelle, if you're listening, Allison's ready for you. I make a mean homemade pizza. I'm making some tonight. She could yeah. come right over. Hey, Allison, this was too much fun. I um, I look forward to uh, to meeting you and your husband in real life. I, I, would I would love to do that. I would love that too. You can come over for Friday night pizza anytime. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed Allison as much as I did. Uh, what a good, easy conversation. Felt like sitting out on some wonderful lawn somewhere. She's so thoughtful, so introspective. I love her willingness to be bold and to try and live a big life. I love the idea that when she met her wonderful husband-to-be, that her idea was, I need to do the work to make this work. And I love that she decided to trust herself. Um, what other actors are mentioning The Alchemist and Paolo Coelho and, of course, Romancing the Stone? Hey, I hope you're enjoying this show. Know that we want to bring you special people like Allison every single weekday. Don't miss a single episode. We'll see you again right here on The Carlos Watson Show. 